Hey everybody, welcome back to the Old Swedes Farm. It's Rich. It's that time of year again. Milkweed for Monarchs 2024. This will be our third year of encouraging people to add native gardens, add milkweed, add habitat for the monarch butterfly uh, and other butterflies that are uh, migrating and need that. But the monarch, as you know, has been in decline uh, for decades and now it seems as though it's starting to make a little comeback but we've been trying to get through all of our viewers find a place where you can plant some native plants and milkweed especially and get that so that the migrating uh, monarchs can use that for place to feed and also uh, lay their eggs for their caterpillars it's year three of the program it's year two for us here doing something and I want to show you last year hopefully you can see this it's a windy day here so if it's windy on the on the microphone I apologize let me uh, spin this around I'm out on the road this is a, a spot that fits or uh, faces west kind of carved into the woods here and we got her fenced in just to keep the chickens out but let me show you what we did We've got all sorts of plants here. There's probably, well, this is last year's stuff, but probably 10 or 12 different plants here from grasses, uh, black-eyed Susans that were here. I planted them last year. I left some little uh, plant stakes in there so we know what's, what's where. Let me jump in here, show you a couple things that are going on. Um, so year two, things will really take off this year, but this is the columbine, one of the first plants to come up in Minnesota. You can see there's already some growth there. And that is the Canadian uh, columbine. That's gonna look like that. It's one of the first bloomers. Then a lot of grasses that we got. Prairie drop seed, uh, side oats, grandma. Some fun names uh, on these. Um, what I'm gonna do is get my torch out. I'm gonna burn those. I'm going to burn those down and let uh, the nitrogen uh, and the carbon that's released uh, from, from burning will uh, help feed the plant as it comes up. Here's another columbine that's showing some growth. Lots of in through that dead material. Growth coming up. So that's encouraging. We've got such a new early spring here. One other thing I want to show you. And this is a different plant right here. This is, if, you've, if you know bee balm, the big, beautiful red plant, well this is the Minnesota native, um, wild bergamot. And it's gonna look like that. Instead of the bright red, it's purple. But uh, that's already starting to come up. So, spin you around here again. I gotta get out of my fencing here without tripping. Um, got a couple of pines in there too. Just trying to vary the this planting, uh, vary it so that uh, there's some shade for it. I uh, occasionally will put a basin of water out here, but there are. Uh, last year we had a lot of monarchs uh, out here, a lot, and a lot of caterpillars. Uh, and I know there was several several groups of caterpillars uh, early ones that i know turned into monarchs a later batch that was here um with a big hailstorm and after the storm i think all the caterpillars got knocked down by the hail and killed to be honest um let me take you over to a different spot in the yard we've been working on this for oh my god five years since we moved in um this our forest or the woods that we had here was just impenetrable when we when we moved in and we have spent years cutting removing block removing garbage removing everything let me show you i've had a plan in my head for a while I've got a big stack of wood here but what i want to do as you see Here's the, the blueberries. There's some blueberry plants in there that are established. Behind the fencing, there is some in here, raspberry, or I'm sorry, strawberries that were put in last year. 
what I want to do is put a edging and then some fencing and get all the fruit the the fruit shrubs over there I'd like to put an edging down here this will all be grass more for me to mow but it'll go back into the the orchard back there what I want to do is bring that edging down move the wood use this area that's been kind of killed by the wood as the start of the garden but then have this whole area be a native garden um, just got to remove some stumps turn over the ground um, there's some block and brick and stone that we found whole pile of metal I just need to get out of here and then we just need to kind of tame this area and it'll be a beautiful buffer um, put another native garden in there and have this be kind of lawn um, then a native garden and then in the middle there an orchard and maybe a big fire pit area too with all the uh, trees of the orchard around it and uh, have it I don't know I'm still uh, formulating everything in my head um, wait until I've I think I've got a good plan and then run it by Holly but I think that would be the perfect edging to have a native garden there and to have it's it gets Sun almost all day I mean it is literally I'm looking you know there's east south um, there are some small trees here so when the Sun gets later in the day um, when the sun's in the west there will be a little bit of shade but this is mostly full sun all day every day um, and I think that'd be perfect for a, a prairie kind of set up prairie uh, lots of prairie plants and grasses and uh, highlighting the uh, milkweed and uh, uh, some other stuff we've the, the big things have been the the milkweed and the uh, what am I thinking of? Butterfly weed. So, hey, let me let me uh, cut here so it's windy. Let me go inside. I'll show you what we're working on, and then I'll uh, issue a little challenge to y'all. I'll be right back. All right, I'm in. Hopefully it wasn't too windy. If it was, I apologize. I want to show you what we're doing um, to get ready. Then I'm going to issue a challenge here. But uh, starting some seeds. Getting the seeds going. I've got uh, two flats already working out here um, that I've got some things started. I just want to show you what we're planting, what I'm considering kind of a, a native garden for Minnesota. And you'll see on the seeds that I got these at Prairie Moon Nursery. So if you want to Google that, uh, you know what, I'll try to put a link in the description uh, to Prairie Moon Nursery. But their plants so far, their seeds have been incredible. Um, so we've got Black Eyed Susan, everybody knows that. Hoary Vervain, beautiful uh, plant. Prairie Spiderwort. Gorgeous plant as well and all these plants you'll notice different structures different colors different heights um, Some are real tall and thin others are You know bushy, but they all work together to kind of create a pseudo prairie uh, When I when I put it in with the grasses uh, the golden Alexander, you know blooms a long time meadow blazing star um, Prairie clover a little smaller. Here's our columbine you know, kind of the first colors of the year to come out that wild bergamot I showed you. Here's the two that uh, really the butterfly, uh, the milkweed varieties that the uh, monarchs love, that butterfly weed and then common milkweed, both native to Minnesota. All these plants are native to Minnesota. And then the three types of grasses that I mix in there to kind of, it helps hold it up. It gives some variable, uh, you know, vegetation. It, it just looks great. Side oats grandma, the little blue stem, gorgeous in the fall. You know, spiky, but it's got that blue, uh, purple hue to it, and then prairie drop seed. Um, so all these plants uh, fit together. It's kind of a pseudo chunk of the prairie out there um, when it's all said and done. Now we're getting our plants all together and get the seeds, seeds going a couple months before. I probably won't plant this stuff till May, but that gives me time to you know, work outside, like I said, get that edging in, move all that, um, uh, move that pile of wood, get a lot of those stumps out of there. And some of those, you know, if the little, those little stumps are still there, I don't care. It's a native garden. Those things can decompose naturally and 
you know, the, the prairie, the, these plants will grow up all around it. So I'm not that worried about that. I'm just trying to get all the, the brick and the weeds and some of that, you know, I'll till it up and let them sprout. Then I'll pull, pull the weeds that sprout. Then I'll turn it over again. Then it'll be time for uh, planting. But here's what I need from you. Here's what I'd love to have for you. There's a lot of people that have been involved in this. Um, if you go out on Facebook, there's a Facebook page uh, that I'll put down, down below. I think it's Milkweed for Monarchs Project. I'll put, the, I'll put the name down there, but if you want to join the group on Facebook, you have to ask to join. Sometimes you get people who just join these things and then they spam the heck out of it. So we're asking people to join, but we've got people all around the country that are a part of this. So um, join the group, uh, add your comments on Facebook. But if you could dedicate a space in your yard, in your, at your farm, on your homestead, wherever it is, even if it's literally a 10 foot by 10 foot area or a few plants, if you can get some milkweed plants, if you could get uh, some varieties that are native for your part of the country, that's really important, and get those planted this year. They might not do anything this year. The, our, uh, what is it? Butterfly weed last year looked great and was the, the preferred host of the monarchs here. But some things will take two years before they, uh, or the next season before they're good. So you're really planting and getting it all ready for next year. But if you could get some milkweed plants if you could get some other host plants for the monarch and then let us know we're kind of getting little speckles all around the country and helping out the monarchs it's been a real neat thing to see over uh, three years uh, but please check in below let us know what you're planting uh, if you're planting where you're located and uh, if you've done it before let us know how your planting's doing if you've got a channel please do a video. I'd love to see what your native garden is looking like this year in year two or three that you've been involved. Um, and I know we literally have people coast to coast who have been involved with Milkweed for Monarchs. If you're involved this year and you put a video out or you comment somewhere or you share this on Instagram or anywhere, I mean, please do share the this idea and, and bring people over here so they can get involved. But put the hashtag Milkweed for Monarchs 2024. And I'll put that in the title here as well. The more we can promote this, the more it'll, we'll get more little plantings around the country, the more we'll help the monarch uh, come back. So thanks everybody. If you've got comments, put them below. If you've got uh, success stories, if you're planting, put it below. I'd love to hear who's all involved and uh, I'm excited that planting's gonna be year two now and it'll mature. I can add even some more plants and grasses to it, get more of the weeds out of it. Um, and then our new planting. It'll be fun to see that evolve. So I've already got uh, three kinds of three kinds of grasses and I've got milkweed and butterfly weed already uh, in the pots and uh, got to get a few more uh, flats of pots to put more more of these other plants in there. So it's nice. Mid-March, spring's happening and the garden's already sprouting out there. So all right, thanks for watching and uh, put your comments down below. Let me know you're involved. Milkweed for Monarchs 2024. Let's kick it off. Take care, everybody.